And if you keep up with today's news or watch shows like House of Cards, then you know sometimes it can be a little hard to feel powerful in today's world. I mean, you and I read books on history and global politics. I also read a series of books about a dog who's a detective, so let's not <laughs> oversell my intellect too much. <laughs> Fair enough, okay. But when you read or watch these things, don't you ever kind of feel, I mean, maybe you guys feel this way too, like it's just all too much. Like there's a giant machine at work that controls things that we can't, and really what kind of difference can we make? On an almost daily basis, yes. Well then, in that case, what do you tell yourself to keep motivated and to do the show and to do your volunteer work? I don't know, I mean, I guess just something like, uh, the world is full of assholes, and the best you can do is not be an asshole yourself. And even if you are sometimes an asshole, just don't be one the rest of the time. Wow. <laughs> That's really poetic. Um, I didn't go through the right girl program, so <laughs> what, what would you say? Um, I think something a little bit more saccharine along the lines of, you can use whatever talents you have, not just to make money, but to make the world better, and that's what will truly make you richer. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, yeah. no, I could totally okay. see that on a poster with it's like a very sunset, maybe a dolphin. <laughs> Absolutely. Something. Oh, wait, not kittens? Oh, wait, look, there it is. <laughs> but I know um, you like kittens, so. Oh, why no, would I, would, I would for sure have a kitten poster, but I'm definitely sticking with the asshole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. He says, he says it all. <laughs> well, you know, everyone needs to find a way of expressing themselves that works for them, and clearly you found what works for you. Good. And that's why we're here <laughs> talking about Right Girl, because they help teenage girls learn how to express themselves in their own unique ways and how to learn to deal with life's challenges. And it turns out that with a little encouragement and some guided mentorship, these girls go on to do great things. Take a look. I'm Karen Taylor, Executive Director of Right Girl. I was a singer-songwriter in New York City for many years, and I got asked to lead some writing workshops for young people. And when I saw the light go on and see the connection they were able to make with language and writing, I really got, I think, just completely compelled to want to do more. So when I moved to L.A. and was laid off my dot-com job, I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And I really decided that I wanted to put my entire life's energy into creating an organization that would help girls develop writing, communication skills, confidence. We match professional women writers with girls one-on-one -on -one for a nine-month mentoring program, and we also bring um, them all together once a month, which is what's happening today, in one room. So it's 140 women and girls in one place. The way this day works is you're going to be writing all day, and at the very end, the singer-songwriters are going to take your lyrics and set them to music. They don't see it. They don't hear it. But it's there. we've had the distinct uh, privilege of being able to send 100% of our girls on to college in a city where the dropout rate hangs around 50%. 100% of our girls have not only graduated from high school but also gone on to college and that's pretty exciting. Hi, I'm Jessica Rebin. I'm 17 years old and been with Right Girl for this is my fourth year. This program has changed my life so much and like all these opportunities because of this program I'm looking forward to and next year is going to be my senior year and because of Right Girl like I can accomplish so much more. I have so much more opportunities because of this program. You know what we found is that girls when they develop confidence they can do whatever they want. I mean it's really about developing the ability for them to see that their voice matters. Right Girl was named California Nonprofit of the Year in 2010 and 2011. And last November, First Lady Michelle Obama awarded Right Girl the National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award, which is the highest honor such a program can receive in the United States. And, <laughs> and most recently, uh, Karen, on March 10th, was named a CNN hero for her work with Right Girl. So please welcome to the stage, Karen Taylor. <laughs> Thank you 
for being here tonight. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. So I know you started Right Girl to help the girls yes. and not for the recognition, but I bet you it doesn't have hurt to have the state of California <laughs> and Michelle Obama and CNN patting you on the back for all the hard work that you've been doing over the years. Yes, it's really amazing. To have that kind of recognition is really helpful. For sure. I mean, meeting Michelle Obama was like... That's her, like, life. <laughs> she's, I dream. love her so much. I can't just, she's my Oprah. She, I would burst into tears. I would totally burst into tears. My friend said, don't wear any makeup, like, below the eyes. So yeah. the tears flow. You don't get those rivers of makeup, you know? Um, she was really amazing. I mean, you know, she... She looks really stately on TV and in her appearances and everything, but she's real. You can tell she's really genuinely passionate about young people, especially. So we brought one girl to the White House. We were only allowed to bring one girl. It was like, oh, you got you got to be kidding me. You, you got to pick one girl, but we did, and she came with us. And they, you're not allowed to hug the first lady until she hugs you. So, uh, but she just reached out. Remember that, Kate? I remember that. It's like, really hard. It's like it's the stop me. It's like the queen. You can't do anything until right. she does. You know, whatever. But she just reached out her arms and hugged every single youth that got an award and had something special to say to each one of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, the girl to this day says that that was one of those moments where she felt that sort of transmission of I can do anything, mm -hmm. I can do something important in the world, you know, and she kind of held that torch for the rest of the right girls too. Uh, I yeah. should have heard your advice about not putting makeup underneath my eyes before you came on stage, because that just well made me burst into tears. <laughs> but um, can you tell us actually how many girls uh, Right Girl has helped since 2001? Yeah, you know, we're working on trying to find them all. <laughs> you know, we, we work with girls that are from the 8th grade to the 12th grade, and and then we send them off to college, and then that's right the moment when they change their email, they change their oh, phone yeah. number. It's like a really hard tracking process. So um, it's been about 500 girls that oh, have come wow. through the program and gone on to college. Wow. And how do you find them? Or how do they find you? Or It's a bit of both, but when we started Right Girl, we recruited at the high-density schools. How many people have been inside a public school lately? Anybody? Mm. Oh, yes, show of hands. Yes. So there are some schools in L.A. that have like 4,500 students, wow. mm -hmm. 5,000 students, 4,300 students. And the things that you see when you walk inside the school are like um, no spitting, no smoking, no skateboarding, no no you know, gum chewing, you know, you have to have a pink slip if you want to go here, a yellow slip if you want to go there, you know, it's like these rule bound, I mean, it's changing, there are some colors coming on the walls and there's some yes things happening and mm -hmm. some positive affirmations, but it's still a pretty rule oriented place and so we went directly to the English teachers at those schools and said, would you help us identify girls that would really need a mentor and benefit from a mentor? So we built relationships with English teachers and counselors and then we stopped recruiting because the, just the floodgates yeah, opened yeah. and you know, we have a waiting list every year for girls that want mentors. Ah. So. And for anyone who's listening who might be interested in becoming a mentor, yes. how does that work? We have a website, rightgirl.org, and we welcome you to go and apply. It's a short application just to tell us about your writing experience. You don't have to be a published author, but you have to have some good communication skills. If you write those hallmark poems that are centered with everything rhyming, it's probably not going to work. <laughs> but, what um, if your dad could teach you AP style <laughs> through your whole Perfect. childhood? Okay. Absolutely. No. I mean, really, you know, it's a lot of things. It's about writing ability, but it's also about compassion. We obviously mm -hmm. want women that are willing to set aside some of their issues and come with the best self they have to help a girl. Because, um, you know, they watch everything you do and everything you say, and you really are a role model for them. But and the commitment, I mean, can you walk us through what the program is? As yeah. As it, for the girl and the mentor? We run a, a season. So we kind of run uh, concurrent with the school year. So we start in October, we end in June. And um, we do a lot of recruitment in s August and September. And there's kind of choices. You can mentor a girl every week. So there's girls meeting with mentors at Starbucks and coffee shops all over LA all, every week. You can mentor a girl once a month just at our monthly workshops like you saw in the video. Or you can mentor at our schools program. And that's um, four schools where there's mostly pregnant parenting teens and incarcerated teens. Oh, that's good. So, but we train you, we put you through a training program so you get some tools on how to work with a girl and how to coach her and you know, what to do when she doesn't want to write anything, which can be really hard. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, there's some strategies that we've used over the years and it's mostly just the things that you'd probably think of if you sat and thought about it for a while, like be positive and try different things and mm -hmm. you know, ask questions. And, and what we saw in the video was a songwriting workshop, yes. but that's not the only... Um, Genre that they no, write. we try to cover all the genres. So over the course of a year, a girl would learn about songwriting, screenwriting, fiction, nonfiction, um, uh, journalism, and maybe some persuasive rising, writing or comic writing. You know, so over the course of a year, she gets like a lot of different genres. Wow. 
Yeah, and you don't have to know all those genres. You can, you can just come and you know, you're know you like helping her go through that program and help her how to learn a new genre. And that's great role modeling too, to show her like, I don't know anything about songwriting, you know, let's do this together. You know? And there's also, they, they become published authors, many of yes. them. Can you tell us? Yeah, we publish a book a year. Um, it's really daunting because um, it's mostly about pain and um, there's a big chapter about boyfriends and breaking up. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work to try to um, coax other things out of them, but by that the end. That does lend itself to a lot of songwriting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Taylor Swift. Adele Definitely, but um, they write a lot about their families and neighborhood and you know the, the world, their views on the world. So we publish a book every year. We've won 60 book awards. That we, wow. They're kind of the most uh, awarded books you've never heard of yet. Yes. Yet. Right. Yet. Well, now, are they available for yes. people to buy? Yes. <laughs> How can people buy yeah. those if they'd like to? They're on our website. They're also on Amazon.com, so you can buy them I've on writegirl.org or Amazon. <laughs> and they're in some bookstores, too. We try to put them in local bookstores and keep them stocked. And the girls perform them at pretty prestigious venues as well, correct? Some yes. Of their pieces. They were just at the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. There was awesome. 18 girls that performed on stage, which is really fun. And um, they're at Skylight Books once a year, at the Writers Guild of America Theater. And we often have girls coming to some of the mayor's events. The, um, Eric Garcetti is a supporter and has brought it a girl to one of his civic events for the last three months. You know? And do you think that that's part of the success of the program, that not only are they writing and writing on a regular basis, but then they get to perform their work in front of people in these prominent venues. Absolutely. That kind of helps, like you were saying, that transmission of I have power and my word. You know, I, I think even more than the writing, it's that confidence thing. And, you know, at the end of a year, it's all sort of incremental. You know, you the girls get to share, like, in a small group with three people, and then they maybe read it in front of the whole group at a private workshop. Then they read at a bookstore. And by the end of the year, they're on stage at the Writers Guild of America Theater, and they're like, you know, I'm not reading the thing I wrote. I wrote something for my mother in the bathroom, and I want to read it now. <laughs> we're just like, what? Wow. Like, she's fearless. Like, she doesn't care. She's just like, I, I have things. I have words I want to say them. I want to read them. Are you ready? Here I go. You know, and it's like that kind of power. What are they going to yeah. do? You right. know, they're going to be able to do anything mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. you know? And you have an event like that coming up yes. in just a few days, yeah. which is why we wanted you here, so you could plug that too. Tell us about the event. It's April 26th. This Saturday night, we have a benefit for Write Girl, and this is kind of a once a year thing we do where the girls are learning scenes and monologues, how to write a powerful scene in a monologue. And at the end of the day, we bring in actors to perform the girls' work. So they get to see them brought to life. So Troy and Belisario from Pretty Little Liars, Trevor St. John from One Life to Live. Wow. Um, a bunch of other fabulous actors are joining us to do some really fast, cold readings. I mean, the girls are going to write them during the day, and then they'll have this. Actors will have about you know 20 minutes to oh, review the script <laughs> and then perform. So we have a red carpet and a silent auction, and it's at the Linwood Dunn Theater in Hollywood. So oh. it's a gorgeous little theater, and we we'd like to offer you all of you, since you're now all friends of Right Girl, a 50% off rate to to come. So thank you very Yay. much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And more on that later. Yeah, more on that later. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have a, a little treat for you guys here. Uh, we have a Right Girl alum who's gone on to do great things that we'd like to bring out. So please welcome Janine Daniels. <laughs> So live theater, to, uh, so we're asking Janine to use that mic so that we can make sure to hear her on the recording later that we're going to post on our YouTube channel. Cool. So welcome. Hey. Hi. What's up? <laughs> hey, everyone. What's up? So if you we don't mind her. me asking, because it's a little bit indelicate, um, how old were you? Oh, turn the mic on. Turn the mic on. How would I do that? Here, let's sit over here. Mm, it doesn't mm, have any turn on. You got it? Yeah, thank you. Um, Shreddy balls, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't go through the right girl program. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to Mike. Okay. Um, so how old were you when you started the right girl program? I was 17 years old when I started the program. And what was your first experience like with right girl? See, that's a delicate subject. Because <laughs> I was in high school, you know, and I was in 11th grade. And at that time, my teacher 
had found out about Ride Girl and told me that I should do it. She gave me a piece of paper and was like, take this home to your mom so you can sign up for the program. Perfect. And I threw it away. <laughs> Cause they were like, oh, you gotta come on Saturdays. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> Saturdays? I'm doing really important stuff on Saturdays. <laughs> no. So then she called my mom and was like, I told your daughter to do this and she's gonna do it. My mom was like, yeah, she is. Mm. So nice. then they, my mom picked me up and dropped me off at Right Girl and I was <laughs> super pissed. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was sitting in the class, I mean like in the workshop and they were like doing some really cool workshop. But at the time I was, you know, I was a teenager so I was upset just cause. Uh, <laughs> so Correct. they were like doing like, a songwriting thing or something. And I was like, this is so stupid. I don't want to do this. So I wrote a song. And I remember being super pissed that I didn't get my song played. And I was like, why do I care so much? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why isn't she reading my words? They're so important to me. So then after that, they hooked me up with the dopest mentor ever. And yes, I said it. I'm going to go on camera saying that she was the dopest mentor ever. Um, and it just, it was such a culture shock for me. Just, you know, being a woman of color, coming from a woman of color neighborhood, that's retarded. Um, <laughs> coming from a neighborhood full of people of color and being in such a diverse space and seeing so many powerful people and just kind of just, you know, not sure how I feel about it. And um, when they hooked me up with my mentor, I met her at a Starbucks and she was in her 60s and she had like green hair and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very, very taken aback, <laughs> you know? And I walked up to her and I was like, hi, are you Liz? She's like, yeah, I'm Liz, who are you? And I was like, oh, this is not gonna work. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, here I am 10 years later and we still talk like every week. So. Oh, that's awesome. It's <laughs> my dog. <laughs> That was a really long speech. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's why you're here. Please tell us about your experience. Okay. So, um, for both of you. Did I even you, answer your question? Yes, you did. <laughs> and actually, is your mom out here tonight? My mom is the totally one who here. Is responsible. Yay! Yay! Oh, yeah. um, so for both of you, we heard in the video the dropout rate in LA is 50%, which is horrifying. But Right Girl has a 100% graduation rate and college enrollment rate for the seniors in your program. How does that happen? What, how, how is that possible? Well, see, I was a special case. <laughs> I was... See, after I got past my teenage angst, I was very dedicated. Oh, good for you. Extremely dedicated. And I didn't really have plans to go to college. I just, it was something that was, you know, you know. <laughs> and you know, my mom was a teacher, so she had plans for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I'm 18, lady. Uh, you know, I can do what I want to do. And right girl was like, no, you can't. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> You're going to right. college. And so I became very close with Allison Deegan. Um, I have no idea what her title is. What is her title? Associate director. She's the associate director. Yeah. And she was like, Janine, you're gonna go to college. I talked to your mother already about it. And, <laughs> you know, at this point, I'm like, but I'm 18 though. And they're like, no one cares. So um, I was nervous because I didn't have like the best grades in the world and I didn't have really great SAT scores. But I thought I had a bubbly personality and I was just like, you know, if I get in there, I'll be good. Um, <laughs> so I applied to 32 schools. Wow. Because I was very nervous. You know? But it's very dedicated. Very dedicated. <laughs> Covering your that is a lot of dedication. It just shows you the dedication of Right Girl because Allison was with me for every single application. Wow. Like, and it was her personal time. Like, Right Girl was, you know, the workshop was over at four. And I was like, hey, so, yeah, we got this other application that's due tomorrow. And it's like 12 o'clock at night. And she's literally on the phone with me, like, talking me through it and we're filling out applications and like it happened and I, I'm not gonna say how many I actually got into, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, say which one you went to. I ended up going to Pitzer College and the Claremont Colleges. Nice. Uh, right? That's freaking sweet, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like something that Right Girl teaches you that because you know coming from the neighborhood I come from a lot of people depend on like camaraderie. So you want to go to school where your friends go to school. And that's not always the best choice for you because private schools will give you, they will shove money down your throat to come to their schools because 
people want to go to, you know, Cal State Dominguez. <laughs> no offense no to offense. anyone who went to Cal State Dominguez. No offense. No, that's you know, it's just like you have to dream big, you know, shoot for the stars and, you know, land in the smog or whatever. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, they had told me, they're like, Janine, you got to move towards these, these, these private colleges. They want young, smart, entrepreneurish African Americans. And I was like, but all my friends are going to Long Beach or West LA. And they're like, what? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I applied to a bunch of private schools that I had, I definitely didn't think I had any chance of getting into. And so I got into a, some random school in some random place. And I was like, yeah, I'll just do that. <laughs> and then Pitzer called me on the phone. They were like, oh yeah, we totally forgot to tell you you're accepted. So you wanna do this? <laughs> and I was like, what? And I was like, oh yeah, we'll give you money and like pretty much a full ride. You trying to do that? And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was, that was the right girl, because Janine was straight chilling. Like. <laughs> I would love it. Actually, I think you brought with you um, one of the things you wrote when you were in Right Girl. I know it was a long time ago. Because um, we're going to yeah. show a clip of something you're currently working on. So, do you mind reading that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you can hold the mic for her, yeah. and that way she I can will. there. Go. It's super arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> I was 18. I was super cool. This is early Janine. This is early, sort of early Janine. Um, it's called myself. Okay, I was arrogant. <laughs> um, from the day I was born. I was God's gift to all the males on this earth. I mean, they all want me, but they can't have me because I own me. Look at this face. Look at these hips. This drop dead gorgeous body, it's all mine. And as much as they tell me they'll give me the world, love me, never cheat on me, care for me, and how much they all want me, I know they're lying. But that's cool, because I don't care. Because I don't want you. I've got myself. Okay, maybe guys don't really want me just as much as I think they do, but I want them. <laughs> But so what? I don't care. I don't mind pretending to get lost and accidentally walking on the basketball court while the game is going on because I want attention. <laughs> terrible. I don't clap for that. I wouldn't have been able to say that when I was 18. I mean, that's I can say that now. <laughs> So um, we're going to show a clip, but before we do, um, you, you, part of your dedication is you've been working for two years. You're the co-creator and you're the writer of a show that airs on the Black and Sexy YouTube channel called The Couple. Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we show. Long story short, I um, had a bad breakup, moved in with a guy, first time in my life. It was really weird, so I wrote down everything that I thought was happening, and then I wrote a web series about it. <laughs> awesome. Here we go. We're going to take a look at this, and it's uh, a webisode, a minisode, um, called Toothpaste. Raised as a man at some point. Exactly correct. What are you talking That's about? Not you can just correct. squeeze it in the, the middle. The same amount comes out no matter where you squeeze it. That's not you're true. Not making any sense when you here. get to the bottom of the tube, you can't just squeeze That's it in the not middle. Not that's not true. Baby, the same amount a scalpel, comes out. not a sledgehammer. No. A scalpel, no. baby, not a sledgehammer. Why you gotta do it all prissy? Prissy? This is correct. I'm sorry you find correct prissy. <laughs> now, the reason why I wanted to show that clip is because when I was a newlywed, my first fight with my husband was about the toothpaste and how you put the cap on. Appropriately, so that really <laughs> resonated with me. Thank Real you. life drama in these streets. <laughs> um, but something very exciting is happening with that. Why don't you tell us, please? Um, well, a young woman from HBO saw the couple and she watched all of it and she offered us a development deal for the couple. Oh. Yay. So, so awesome. Yay! So to me. Well, we want to say thank you for being here. And everybody, please watch out for The Couple on HBO and set your yeah. DVRs so we can binge watch as soon binge as it's out. Watch. Binge watch. Sorry, as soon as it comes out. <laughs> um, and now, 
We are going to play a game to raise some money for Right Girls. So before we do that, tell us where the money is going to go. Wow. Yeah. I mean, because you know. How, yeah. Exactly. How much? Pull out your tax forms. <laughs> but just in general. How? Yeah. You know, we're actually, um, you know, a lean organization, but there's always costs involved with uh, food for the girls, uh, journals, books. Staff cost is pr pretty much our biggest cost to be able to have people like Allison and others in the office to be able to call girls, get them to the workshops, match them with mentors, follow their, along their progress, help them with the college essays, put on workshops. So, you know, really the workshops are the thing that we need the, the funds the most for Perfect. and staff. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you both so much. Awesome. Thank you. Give it up for Karen thank and Janine. Yeah, you did such a great job, Janine. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling the power of words. It turns out writing's not just for nerds. It takes <laughs> talent and skill. And it's slapping. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Man that was touching and inspiring and moving. 